Nice bit of land you got here, Mikey. Well, thank you, Mike. So, what all are you doing with it? Oh, not much. We just got a little farming and little animals and stuff like that going on. Yeah? You gonna be uh, eating any of this stuff? Uh, no, I'm just raising it for you. No. Oh, that's awful nice of you. <laughs> yeah, hopefully be eating a good percentage of our food from the land eventually. Yeah? So, yeah, starting out small. Okay. With the calves. If you'll pan over this way. The calves and the goat. Yeah. What all else do you have? All right, Mike, over here we have what is called a chicken tractor. We have six laying hens in here. And this is lightweight so we can move it around and it can they can pick the grass and eat bugs along the way. And I do let them run around if I'm out working and get a chance to. Um, they lay eggs up in there when they're doing it right. Every once in a while they lay them down in here. But that's about it on the chicken tractor. What else you got, Mikey? Well, we have rabbits. These are white New Zealands. And over to my left, your right, we have black New Zealands who have recently had babies. Uh -huh. The babies on this side are a little over a month old and the ones on this side are a little under a month old. And I like to feed them commercial mix and then lots of green stuff. Now, where do and you find that green stuff, Mike? Well, either get it out of the garden, some of it, or just in the pasture. Have lots of good rabbit eatings here. Mm. They have plantain they like, burdock they really like, clover, black medic. Uh, back here we have a bamboo patch. They really like the bamboo also. So is there a reason that you keep the white New Zealand and black New Zealand rabbits segregated? <laughs> well, it just worked out that way. I built this the other day because I had the three young does, these are my white does, together and they needed more room. So I built this and these bins happened to be bigger and since they had babies I moved them over there. That's the only reason they're segregated. And this is my buck down here. Yeah. Had a buck earlier, a black buck with the black ones before I got all the white ones. And I think he was sterile. We never had anything happen. Brought him on board and we've been having rabbits. That'll happen. There's some fine looking rabbits there, Mackie. What else you got? Well, I have chicks. These, the white ones are Cornish. These are my meat chicks. They're not chicks anymore. Um, the red ones are some Rhode Island Reds that hopefully will all be hens. And the little ones are Bantams. Um, I hope to keep a couple of those to patrol my garden because they're a little easier on the plants than the big guys. One of them died. One of the Bantams. Yeah, that happens sometimes. And then one of the white ones got sick and then we had So, why are you hoping for hens, Mikey? <laughs> well, the Rhode Island Reds will hopefully be the replacement for my other laying hens. And the white ones are just going to be meat. And we'll go in and look at the other chicks, the stage before this. Okay. For, for meat chickens. What are we doing in here, Mike? This is starting out with uh, chicks. These are Cornish crosses. Um, they grow pretty quick. The uh, brown one in there is an exotic chick they sent as a free gift for buying the other ones. I don't even know what it is. Well, does that mean it's worth a lot of money? Uh, probably not. Okay. But it might be good eating. But anyway, once these get bigger, they'll go in the pen where the other ones are. The other ones will move over to my other chicken tractor that's similar to the one you saw earlier. Mm -hmm. And then I'll get some more to put in here. Good deal. Well, Mikey, I've seen a lot of protein on uh, on the hoof and, and on the claw, but uh, what else you got more. around here? <laughs> well, I got my son. Yeah? Him. Okay. But what? we do have the annuals garden. I'm trying to do a lot of perennial stuff, but just a quick view of the annuals. Alrighty. Um, over here we have broccoli. Just harvested one that we ate today. We have a lot of radishes. Most of those, we nibble on them here and there, but most of those go to the rabbits. We have uh, cabbage. We have some peas in the back. Um, and that's it. More broccoli down here. Watch out. Let me take over here. I like to mix up all my stuff. I have lettuce, green beans that'll come up this uh, 
teepee. I have a watermelon here. Um, a few tomatoes. I just put a little bit of tomatoes in here. I got more in another bed inside the patio. My eggplants are doing real well. I have eggplant coming in. Over here I have a little bit of stuff that's bolting just because it's gotten so hot. I think it's mostly the uh, mosh that is bolting, but this is a salad mix on this side and up on that end where you're pointing now, that's uh, collard greens. I have sweet potatoes in this bed and they're not as far along as I wanted because I had ordered them and kept calling. They wouldn't send them and they kept saying, oh, it'll be another week, it'll be another week, it'll be a month. So I finally just went out and got some. So I would have liked to have them in a little earlier. Here I have some more tomatoes, uh, some more green beans to grow up these vines, some mustard greens. Some of them aren't looking too healthy. I need to get in there and thin those. I have a bunch of lettuce, broccoli, kohlrabi, some Swiss chard that the uh, spider mites have gotten to, and another eggplant and some broccoli. Well, that's pretty impressive, Mike. Is that all you got? No. Now we get to go to the perennial stuff, which is the fun stuff. Okay. So we're at the perennial garden, and what do you got? Well, back over here on this trellis, we have a couple of grapes. So you got grapes? Yeah, this is Swiss chard. For some reason, Swiss chard is not doing too good. But, lamb's quarter comes up everywhere, and this is good eating. It's a weed, supposedly. Um, we have blueberry bushes over in this area. Don't fill all the junk. Oh, <laughs> I'll carefully edit that out. <laughs> Lots of projects going. Here we have comfrey which people used to eat. Most people don't eat it anymore, but uh, I'm raising it for the animals. You can dry comfrey like uh, hay and keep it for the winter. We have some hosta, which is not great tasting, but it is edible. That's not why I grew it. And we have a few uh, pumpkins that are just volunteering here because I had this uh, processed by the chickens over the winter and fed them a lot of uh, jack-o'-lanterns that were thrown away. <laughs> I have asparagus. This is the first year on the asparagus. It's kind of spindly but it was just planted and doing pretty good I think for for first year just starting. Um, the next bed up in the terrace we have more comfrey on the end looks like another volunteer pumpkin. We have uh, Juneberry strawberries. We have mustard greens that are in need of thinning or those are turnip greens in need of thinning. We have New Zealand spinach, which is a perennial, but I don't think it'll perennial here in Pennsylvania. It may self seed. We'll just have to see what that what happens there. I've also didn't have a good place to put it yet, so I just put it here. But we'll keep on cutting it and extending it. This is uh, um, Good King Henry, which is you use the sprouts like a uh, the shoots like asparagus. So I hope to get a big bit of that going. Um, intertwined in here, we have watermelons and different things. Uh, different places, we have a begonia just because I thought that was pretty. But different places we have uh, around the place, and I want to get this in thicker, some ostrich fern. This is chickweed. I try to encourage it to grow everywhere. It's easy to pull up for the animals. It's edible for people, and rabbits love it. Back over here, he has some colt's foot coming up, but we have uh, some more ostrich fern. Again, I want to fill that whole place in. These two beds over here are ever-bearing strawberries. And lots of lamb's quarter growing again. We have some uh, yellow sorrel coming up. We have all kinds of good stuff in there. In this bed we have more asparagus. Just this much of the patch. We have uh, some mint over there in the container, hoping to keep it contained so it doesn't get away from us. This is a work in progress. I hope to make a more naturalized looking area. A lot of the stuff in here most people consider weeds. I like it. Um, the thistle I try to pull out. But this is eucalyptus. I don't know if it's going to do any good here or not, but thought we'd try it. Have lots of 
native plants, the plantains, buckhorn plantain, and uh, dandelion. Again, perfect for the uh, rabbits. We have lots of lavender, just because we like lavender. Um, a couple of different sage. We have a pineapple sage and a tricolor sage. Um, let's see, we have a rosemary and a flax. We have lovage, which is sim similar in taste to celery. Celery is kind of hard and laborsome to grow, so we just use that for the seasoning. This, again, is burdock. I love this stuff. Nice huge leaves that the uh, rabbits eat. I think it looks pretty. I'll get it keep on growing in here. A big old uh, yarrow up here. Snip it out of the way. Don't step on the crop. Let's see. We have a honeyberry right here. I read somewhere they're invasive. So far this one doesn't look like it's too invasive. <laughs> Hopefully it'll get going. Um, trying to take advantage of, I have a fiddlehead for you to see. I'm trying to take advantage of the shade and they have more ostrich fern going. What's the significance of the fiddlehead? The fiddlehead is the part that you eat. It comes up in the fiddleheads like this. You cut them off and then you cook this like asparagus. Um, quite tasty. Here we have chamomile. It's kind of like the shade. Um, nothing of importance up there. Just roots to hold the, the barrier in place there. We have a plum tree. Self-pollinating plum. It's a semi-dwarf. We have, a, I think that one's the wine sap apple tree over there. And on this side, gala. Both of those are semi-dwarf. Didn't you have some trees in the back as well? Yeah, in the back we have a peach tree, um, a black walnut, uh, almond, and then we have some firewood trees for coppicing. Um, trees that cope us real well for the firewood are uh, birch down there and uh, uh, poplar. That's quite a bit there Mike. Yeah there's, there's uh, more berries down there that I don't think we filmed but some cherries and some blue. Well Mike we got a little cut off there but you were telling me as far as there's a few other things you got. Yes this is the back patio and I have these fenced in thanks to the dog Happy. He likes to dig in it. And we have tomatoes going here. We have peppers down in here. On the back, because this is actually a north wall, this thing is on the, this is to the north of the wall. Um, and it gets sunshine on the tomatoes here. But to take advantage of the shade, I have collard greens going back there. And as you can see, more pumpkins coming up. Um, I have to pull some of those. Getting a little thick, but that's from having the chickens there again and feeding them uh, pumpkins. Alrighty, what else you got, Mike? Well, here we have another happy barrier to keep the dog out. We have some green beans growing up the fence and up some of these Jerusalem artichokes. These are Jerusalem artichokes. I think I got a pound or two of them, can't remember now, and planted them. And I'll probably leave them this year and let them, all the tubers that are in there come back next year and really thicken this in. Alright, anything else, Mike? Yes, if we come up on the catwalk, I can show you the culinary herb garden. What's up here, Mike? Yeah, this is just a culinary garden. We have uh, little planters here with all different stuff. We have basil and um, parsley, cilantro. We have a sage that will go out into the perennial garden later. Fennel. Oh, different kind of, all down here, different kind of stuff. Uh, we have a lavender down there, again, just because we like it. We have a tomato on that end and a tomato on this end. And that's the big part of it. Well, you should be right proud of what you accomplished, Mike. Well, I am. Fine bit of land you got here, Mike. Am I being recorded? Mike's new lawnmower.
So Mike, I understand that uh, when you were in Korea, you, you picked up some interesting culinary taste. Yeah, and that might be the sound that you heard on the back of some of the shots, and it's uh, our dog here, raising him for a little bit of meat. Wow. Yeah, while he's still tender. What's his name? This is Happy. <laughs> well, for now, maybe. <laughs>